Welcome back to the Keaton Knife Shop. Today, we're going to be making a small Venturi style burner. A burner of this size will be adequate for small forges, or in my case, using it as a heat treating burner in a larger forge. That is the reason why I built this small burner, specifically for heat treating 1084. My blown forge burner was overshooting critical temperature too quickly, so this small burner helps me ease up to the approximately 1500 degree mark when heat treating my knives. Before we get started with this tutorial, please hit that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. It will really help out the channel and you'll get notified of fun and hopefully informative content like this in the future. Today we're going to be building what is known as the Frosty T Venturi Burner. This method of construction was pioneered by a gentleman named Frosty on the Knife Dog message forms. A link to his plans can be found in the description below. This little burner is a very economical burner. Without some of the additional fittings that I am using, you can make this burner for $16. With all the fittings that I'm outlining here, you can make this burner for about 21 bucks. I found that I got the best prices on these components when I ordered it online. So I'm going to put a list of the required items to duplicate this build in the description below. Most everything came from a supplier named Supply House. You have to buy the MIG tips separately. So let's start from the top with the components. You're going to need a 3 quarters of an inch merchant's coupling. We'll get more into the details of this merchant's coupling versus a reducer later on in the video. You'll need a 6 inch by 3 quarters of an inch nipple, a 1 inch by 1 inch by 3 quarters of an inch T, a 30 thousandths of an inch MIG tip, a quarter inch flare to eighth inch MPT male pipe thread union, a quarter inch flare swivel coupling, a quarter inch flare to quarter inch female elbow, and finally a three eighths flare to a quarter inch MPT union. So let's get this build started. Step one is going to be to put a hole in the top of the center of the T. What you see me doing here is milling a flat section on top of the T. You can do this with a mill, with a grinder, with a file, but all this does is help you drill the hole nice and straight. Next step is to mark this up, take a set of calipers, find the center of the T, and then hit a center punch right in the middle. As a side note, Frosty recommends getting a floor flange to set up in your drill press for drilling to keep everything nice and straight, but I'm going to try it out on a mini mill. You will be drilling a 21 by 64 of an inch hole so that you can tap it with an eighth of an inch by 27 MPT tap. This is going to be the same threads of your eighth of an inch male pipe thread to quarter inch flare fitting. After the hole is drilled, I suggest you using the drill press or the mill that you're using to start your tap make sure the power is turned off. You'll be turning the drill press with your hands. After you have it nice and started, you can remove the tap from the drill press and then finish it out fully by hand. Next, we'll be tapping the center of the eighth inch male pipe thread fitting to accept the MIG tip. The Hobart MIG tips that I am using are threaded in quarter inch by 28 NF. The ID of the fitting doesn't need to be drilled in this case, since it comes from the manufacturer around the correct size for tapping. After you get that fitting tapped, you're ready to assemble. This step is pretty easy. Go ahead and screw your MIG tip into your eighth inch MPT to quarter inch flare fitting. Then take that fitting and thread it into the top of your T. Next, you can connect your three quarters of an inch by six inch nipple and merchant's coupling to the T. After that, you can connect your quarter inch flare by quarter inch flare swivel. Then the elbow that goes from quarter inch flare to quarter inch female pipe thread. And then finally, the fitting that goes from quarter inch pipe thread to three eighths of an inch flare. This will be what you're hooking up to your propane tank. Now we're off to testing. 
you're going to want to test in the vise because everyone likes doing that. So in order to do so, this Merchings coupling won't do very hot. It won't hold the flame at the end of the burner. So if you want to test in the vise, you're going to have to use a 3 quarters of an inch to 1 inch reducer. I'm showing the difference between those two here. I'm trying to test it with the Merchants coupling. It's not working out too well. You put the reducer on there and it will hold the flame. In practice, I use the Merchants coupling in the forge because the forge itself holds the flame. If you're not happy with the way your burner is running, you can adjust the length of the MIG tip to fine tune this burner. Frosty suggests taking off sometimes around the eighth of an inch in order to keep the MIG tip in the center of the T. For being such a small burner, I'm impressed on how well this burner heats up my forge. The internal dimensions of my forge are 6 inches in diameter and about 18 inches long, which I consider too big for this burner when it comes to day-to-day -day forging. However, that's not why I built this burner. I've been able to successfully heat treat 1084 blades when running this burner at around 5 psi. And I'm happy with that. Overall, the setup for heat treating is very controllable. I don't overshoot temperatures anymore, and coupled with the muffle pipe, I feel like I have a lot of control over this setup. With a smaller forge, this burner will surely meet the needs of a beginner bladesmith and at a very affordable price. So to wrap this up, if you're getting into forging and you're a beginning knife maker, I really hope this video helped you out. I really enjoyed building this burner and I was tempted to make a few more just for fun. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel and if you have questions about this build, feel free to drop them below in the comment section and I'll make sure to answer them. Until then, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.